The way we make things is changing, radically. A new set of ideas and trends have emerged and combined to create a new industrial revolution, one led by people and human innovation. They're using ideas like collaborative design teams and leaner, more customizable manufacturing. Once upon a time, a factory made one thing. Now, a factory can make almost as many things as there are people to imagine them. From Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. JSE listed residential property developer Calgro M3 Holdings subsidiary Calgro M3 Memorial Parks has diversified its portfolio by recently launching its first memorial park in Nazareth near Soweto. Ilan Solomons filed this report. The Nazareth Memorial Park is the first development of its kind by Calgro M3 in what it says promises to fulfill a need to provide a dignified last resting place for loved ones. The 20 hectare Nazareth Memorial Park, situated just off the Nazareth off-ramp on the Western Bypass, will initially accommodate 22,500 graves, with the potential to add another 11,000 graves at a later stage. Calgro M3 MD Vickers Lottagon explains the rationale behind the company's decision to diversify its portfolio and how privately owned burial parks will help to alleviate the current pressure state-owned cemeteries face in providing burials and maintaining grave sites. We do township dis establishment development. So what happens is to put in perspective, I'm going to use our Fleur of project as an example. We buy property, Fleur of is 400 hectares, and we develop that, so it's, it's previously mining land, which you develop, it's an infill site connecting Soweto with the northern fluent suburbs. Um, and as soon as you start developing it, there's certain unusable areas. Why I say it's unusable? On mining land, there's certain depth that if it becomes below that, you're not allowed to do residential or commercial or industrial development on that. So we needed a use for those, those land. You can always develop it as a normal park. Your challenge to that is how do you maintain that on a sustainable model? We all know that the councils can't maintain it and it's not because of a lack of trying, it's a lack of budget. Um, there's, there's just way bigger service delivery challenges in this country than to maintain parks. Calgro M3 has undertaken extensive research over the past three years and invested 75 million rand in the project since acquiring the land parcel in October 2014. The company has also placed a high premium on security, including having 24-hour roaming guards, a closed-circuit television system, electrified fencing and appropriate lighting. Lottachan says that Calgro M3 intends to reinvent how people perceive burial areas as the memorial park will provide a peaceful, park-like environment with the sounds of bird song and flowing water where families from nearby communities will be able to come not only for funerals and to commemorate their loved ones but also just to relax. Additionally the memorial park's features include indigenous trees in a landscape garden with two man-made lakes linked by a stream. An island has been built in the bigger dam to attract bird life. A wall of remembrance with an external flame is also located at the centre of the park. The Nazareth Memorial Park will also boast four chapels, the biggest accommodating 200 people, but which could be extended for larger groups. Lottachan says that this will replace the numerous tents that are often required at funerals and which create the impression of commercialisation and clutter often associated with the public cemeteries. Um, what is different? Everything is different. We already said, this must compare. Our goal is for this to compare to world standards. In fact, become the world standard. We researched for the last three years cemeteries around the world. We want to become the standard. If someone wants to develop memorial parks, um, they want to have to look at Calgary and say, what do you do? You'll see this won't be straight, um, just rows and rows of, of, of graves. It's this different setup. It's a park where people to be, happen to be buried, not a cemetery. If you walk in here, you must get this sparkly feeling. You must, with your family, be able to come here on a Sunday afternoon. The kids must be safe. We've got 24-hour roaming guards. We've got CCTV cameras. We've got electric fence. We've got proper security access control. So your kids must be able to play. You must take a stroller next to the stream. Go and sit at one of the dams. Think about and quietness about what life's about. And while you're here, 
walk past the graves of your, of your loved one and show your condolences. This is what this model is about. It's about the people, it's about restoring the dignity process, not only the day of the burial, but forever. Energy Solutions Provider and Project Consultant Matlang CEO Corey van der Watt points out that the Nazareth Memorial Park will be operated entirely off the electricity grid using renewable energy sources and generator backup power. What we've done in terms of the energy electrical system of the setup, it's a memorial park. And when you look at electricity consumption, you think that a memorial park like this only uses very limited electricity, which is not the case. We're going to start off, uh, we have a chapel taking about 200 people that will run seven days a week. We have quite a lot of water features. We've got two big dams and also intermediate, intermediate dams. And then also we've got a wall of remembrance. We've got a, quite a big entrance hall or entrance. And then we've got the admin block that will run all the admin. So if you look at that in total, we're looking most probably at 80 kVA, 90 kVA. So that's our load. And that's the point of departure as a consultant where you start. We calculated back, obviously we allowed for factors in it and we've created what we call uh, two sources, let's call it substations. Uh, one close to the admin block that will look at the top part of the, uh, the memorial park. It will be um, the admin block as well as the pumps, as well as the entrance hall. And then we have a second source substation down there. Both of these are totally off grid. They solar power, power systems. And so it's, you've got your panels, through an inverter and a battery charger, we charge the batteries, the inverter supplies the source. So that's basically the background, two sources and the load that we're looking at. One of the aims from, from Calgary was to make sure that it's a very secure park. And a secure park, when you visit it, it cannot really afford power outages. So if you look at the lighting system, it is individual lights. It, if you turn around and have a look, it's got a solar panel that uh, charges batteries, that batteries then feeds the street lights. Or well, let's call it in this case, the area lighting. So firstly, it's, it's secure. Secondly, it's individual units off grid. And thirdly, yeah, it doesn't use any power from the grid. Other news making headlines this week, Telcom steps up its turnaround strategy as gains emerge. Ford improves its automation processes at its Silverton assembly plant and South Africa's geoscience industry is desperately underfunded. JSE-listed Telcom is nearing the end of its first chapter of its turnaround program, which is seeing the embattled group stabilize after a downward spiral in recent years. Our cash is very, very strong, so we've generated about 3.9 billion rands worth of cash uh, out of the business. Our group net debt has decreased uh, by about 100%, so effectively we don't owe anybody any money now. Automotive manufacturer Ford's Silverton assembly plant in Pretoria has improved the automation of the Ford Ranger production line following the installation of a conveyor belt and wax system. At Silverton Ford assembly plant, our automation systems, we're working in three shops. One is our body shop area, second is our paint shop area, and then we've got our material planning and logistics teams that is supporting all these areas. And the fourth one is the trim area that is also supported by our material planning and logistics team. Government geoscientists are desperately underfunded, which is depriving South Africa of the geological potential that is essential for minerals exploration. So let's review the evidence. Geological potential. Do we as a country invest in our geological potential? The Geoscience. Our government geoscientists are desperately underfunded. In the counter-cyclical times, when the industry is not doing well, do we invest? Do we do geophysical surveys? Do we do large regional geological mapping exercises? Do we train master's students? No, what we do is we make our government geoscientists pay their own salaries by working on other countries' geological potential. The guys are working across the rest of the, the continent for other countries and for multilateral agencies. So plainly, we do nothing to encourage our geological potential. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.